Gaelic football on Off The Ball. With AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Right, this is just a gentle reminder that there's actually two games taking place at Croke Park this weekend where a second uh, berth in an All-Ireland football final will be awarded. Not that you would know it if you've been paying any attention to the national media and maybe that's how they like it in Derry and Galway. I'm not sure. Conleth Gilligan, good afternoon to you. How are you? Good afternoon, very well, thank you. Um, This hasn't been quite the... Uh, focus or attention of most people in the build-up to this game. Maybe that's to be expected, but maybe it's also because people don't really fully understand exactly what to make of this Derry team just yet. Um, wh- wh- what's the build-up been like? What's the the level of expectation like? Yeah, look, it has been really keenly anticipated in Derry because it's it's been so long from this type of success that it's like Christmas Eve for for us Derry people getting to Group Park again tomorrow and the hope that and maybe the expectation that we could make a final. Um, I think the Derry players and, and the management have probably embraced it a wee bit more than, than the three other teams in the semi-final. Like Derry had an open press day for people and you know Rory Gallagher was very open whereas Galway have shut it down. And Look, the team that wins will look back at it and say we either done it right or done it wrong but you know there's a, there's a huge anticipation within Derry and, and I mean within Ulster that, that maybe the, the Sam could be, be staying up here. Right, it's it's not just not just looking past the semi final. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, why wouldn't you at this point? Well, look, when you listen to Rory Gallagher and the players, you know they're not talking. Well, well, they are talking at one game at a time. You know, you could tell very early on after the beat Tyrone that they really thought that an Ulster Championship was within them. And and I'll be honest, I had my doubts, um, but but they didn't. And look, they delivered every time. The Clare game, we travelled and and we were expecting a victory. We didn't think it'd be as easy as it was, but. Um, they showed everything they needed to show and a real ruthless approach to it whenever Arm had three goal chances that they fisted for points every time Derry got close in around the 13 they went for the jugular and, and that paid dividends so I think Derry have shown that they have a game that's, that's capable of uh, of beating anybody in Crook Park defensively they were, they were sound while they conceded a couple of goals and gave them something to work on you know I think they showed enough that um, Galway will have to work very very hard for their scores tomorrow um, the the Clare game is really interesting because they actually started with a good bit of nerves and it, it, it like it, they melted away when the first goal went in obviously but there were several wides in succession which you would hope that's out of the system now because it didn't it wasn't about execution it wasn't about anything it felt like other than this is a big, big occasion. We haven't quite been here yet. That's the one nagging doubt that we have ex- exactly what will happen when they face a team who are really good at this level of competition. And yet, the path through Ulster was so difficult that there should be no reason for them, for for any of that to worry them. Mm-hmm. How do you just make sure that the nervousness isn't there for the All-Ireland semi-final and that Galway don't rack up 1-3, 1-4, 1-5 in the same period? Yeah, and that's going to be the danger. Um, both teams will be cagey, but the one thing that we had going into the, the Clare game was that Derry team hadn't played in Croke Park and and while a lot of people made a lot of the size of the pitch and the tape of the pitch, it does make a difference. Shooting into the hill, shooting into the um, Davin stand, it is different. There's a different wind tunnel, you know, right down along the Cusick. So there was a lot of stuff Derry had to get used to and had to get used to very quickly and they did. And I think that is out of the system. I think it'll be a lot better for the experience. Um, but as you say, Derry through Ulster up until the Ulster final always had got a good start they'd went behind so I think they've answered a lot of the questions but in this Galway team they are playing a team with a forward division that that's at a different level from a lot because even though Derry had played a lot of Division 1 teams you know when you have the likes of your Affinities your Comers your Walsh's um, Tierney's like there's a huge scoring potential on all them so and I think even from midfield now you know McDade obviously at the game was like the last day um, so there's a lot of scores to be had in other areas so Derry will want to keep it very very tight at the start and they're used to playing that type of game. Galway did introduce a more defensive game for Mayo and it did work for long periods. But I suppose the one thing that, that Derry and Gallagher will look back on is that they had Mayo beat out the gate and they let them in again. Russ Common, they let them in again. And Armagh were down to 14 men. The game was over. They just needed to see it out and just they couldn't. So th- there is question marks um, that still exist around Galway's defensive plan. So it will be... Galway's real strong offensive game versus Derry's really good and organised defensive game and, and it will be very, very cagey and I don't expect the first 10, 15 minutes to be any different than, than I suppose Derry and Clare. Before I ask you about matchups and, and, and who you expect to pick up who in that back line and what, what job Chrissy McKay is going to have in, in your take on that um, it's the ideal scenario for whoever wins this because whatever happens they know that 24 hours later all of the talk 
will be about the other semi-final, almost irrespective. Maybe if this game goes to penalties, but even still, even if it goes to penalties, whatever happens between Kerry and Dublin, the winners of that game are going to be the favourites for the All-Ireland Final, just because of weight of tradition and, and where the teams are um, respectively at the moment. So, like, the prize on offer is being under the radar in an All-Ireland Final and massive underdogs. It's a, a, an incredible carrot for either team. Yeah, it is. And look, a lot of the imagination is Gary, you know, Kerry and Dublin, you know, it is that tradition of big, two big guns going at it. You know, a lot of people maybe expect it at some point to be in a final. Um, and a lot of people would say that that is, is the final, you know, and, and whether Dublin risk a Conor Callan and Clifford, it's a big game. But for whoever comes through that game, it's massive. It'll be bonus territory for both of them to be realistic. Derry are probably doing things a year or two earlier than maybe a lot of people would have expected. Um, and Forrick Joyce would be probably in the trajectory he'd wanted to be in. But I think it's a massive carrot for any team. And neither Kerry nor Dublin will want to come up against, you know, particularly if Derry can get through. Uh, that defensive setup because Derry do able to get it right um, and in terms of the personnel they have at the back they're probably one of the few teams that have defenders who can match up really really well well let, let's talk about those matchups then Chris and McKay, like in in a if if everything worked properly in our society, he would be in the conversation for footballer of the year at the moment because of who he's been able to close down and what he's done. But defenders don't get no credit. That's them's the rules. We don't make them, unfortunately. Uh, but he's like he he's not quite a shoe in for an all star yet. But if he does a job on any of the forwards at the weekend, he should be. Who is he? Is he automatically on Shane Walsh? Is he on Comer? What are you doing with him? Yeah, look, I think this is where. You know, Endable Dune, Kieran Mina and, and Geller have got it bang on every single game. But this game is different because they have an extra forward to watch more than they have Defender to mark them, if that makes sense. I think Fennerty is picked up by McCluskey. I think that sort of looks after itself. For me, this team again will want to stay close to the goal. And I think that's why he'll pick up Comer. But the $64,000 question is then who goes to Walsh? Because obviously, Chrissy McKeek has picked up all the big main forwards and, and Walsh would be that man. Um, I think the last day, Arma done a great job on Walsh. And I think it could be Brenton Rogers going out on him. But if you're looking at something probably a wee bit left field, you know, it could be a potted McGrogan with Gareth McKinless ready to double up in there. So, um, But Derry don't naturally have the right fit because if, if Brenton Rogers goes to midfield, for example, and he'd match up with McDade really well, then the question is, Derry are one defender short, or it could be Padraig McGoon goes to midfield and Brenton Rogers goes on on uh, Shane Walsh. And I think that may be something where it starts depending. Derry also have the option of bringing in Emmett Bradley, who naturally is a midfielder. Um, for now, Toner has suggested every game from the, the throne game. So Derry have got a few questions to answer in terms of how they match up, but I still think that Derry have the personnel. Gareth McGuinness, I think would be Taylor May as well for uh, Shane Walsh, except the fact that he drops off and, and fills a lot of holes means that Derry would have to change things structurally. And, and the one thing Rory Geller has shown that he doesn't like to do that. It tends to be they'll play the same way and there'll be no surprises from Derry. They're very, very formulaic in that regard, whereas it's a wee bit more ad hoc for, for how ball we defend. OK. Um, it sounds like you feel quite confident about at least getting a performance and on the back of that, perhaps the win? Yeah, look, I think definitely Derry will give a performance. I think what they've showed from, from day dot is that they have prepared to win an Ulster Championship. Um, and I suppose going down to Group Park the last day, there was, there was a certain fear of, well, was that enough? Has that been enough? But they showed a real ruthless streak that it's not enough. And you listen to Rory Gallagher in, in the press conference and when they talked about his style of football. And, and basically all he said was that they have, they're trying to get a winning style of football, whether it's defensive or offensive, they don't mind. It's about winning. And he sounds bullish. And again, I like that. There was no, um, I'm hoping and I'm wishing. No, he was very bullish in that, look, we're going down there, we're going to give a performance. And if it's enough to beat Galway, it's enough. So look, I think Derry's in a very, very good position. But equally, Galway are going to be looking at this. They give them a trimming in the league, for want of a better word, by, by 10 points. And I know there was circumstances, it was winter football, but... I still think Derry will probably have learned more from that Galway game and it leaves Galway going in just a wee bit more unsure of Derry um, than they'd want to be. Um, the, the other thing you talked there about, uh, it feels like it might have been a bit early, certainly in, in people's minds about where this Derry team might be. But like, you know, you've, you've also got to make hay while the opportunity is there. And uh, while it did take Donegal a second year to get to the level where they were winning All-Irelands, 
there's no reason why we couldn't actually retrospectively look at this and go well if maybe uh, there had been a back door last year we would have seen much more Derry and we would have realised that actually they are one of the top tier teams in the country so maybe this is their time yeah, look, I think so. And I think the fact that Rory Gallagher was heavily involved in that Donegal uh, when means that he has seen the pitfalls. He's seen where it went right and where it went wrong for Donegal. And, and I suppose he's been able to bring that blueprint into Derry and, and with a very young, playable team, been able to really stamp his authority on what he wants. And, and the one thing he done was like, those players earlier in the season that didn't fit into the system, they're no longer in the panel. And whether you agree or disagree, the fact is he's got players that want to play the style of football he wants to play. And the fact now that they're winning, it just doubles down on it. And look, they have players that in every position, they know the subs that are going to come on. Um, I suppose the subs will be a bit more untested than than some of the bigger teams, but they've come on. Like Lachlan Murray's coming on at 19 years of age. Like that, That's unheard of for, for a lot of teams, but he just trusts the players to slot in there. And I think that what he has done has just been an incredible feat for any manager um, and any team in any era. Well, I'm, I'm interested in that because... Uh, it looked like from the outside like Derry football had turned into a bit of a basket case and there were factions and the best club players weren't playing for the inter-county team and yet over a three-year period you're in an All-Ireland semi-final where as you say everybody understands what their role is and players are willing to sacrifice for the collective good how did that happen? I think there's a lot of things went wrong for previous managers that, that Lurie hasn't had to deal with. You know, Slot Neil went on a three or four in a row between All Ireland football and Hurling finals. And, you know, that meant that Chrissy McKeague and Brenton Rogers and Shane McGuigan weren't available to previous Derry managers. And, and if those players hadn't been available this year, like I'd have no doubt that Derry wouldn't be in the same trajectory. So there was a lot of things that went wrong. But when Rory Geller came in, he was the man that everybody wanted. You know, he had a track record of winning and improving every team he had been with. So I think players bought in pretty early. And the fact that they got promotion, the fact that it went year on year and year just meant that he was able to sell them the dream and tell them, look, we're going to win Ulster. And a bit like Jim Dunn with Donegal. And whenever it happens and players believe it, then it just means that they can check on. And um, I think it's a case that the right players are there. There's a good age profile. COVID come at a great time because nobody was fit to travel. Those new players went to America. Um, those new players went traveling and went all around the world. And I think just it was a perfect storm. The, the, the right players were in position at the right time with the right management. And I think just everything sort of come together, you know, really well at the right time. Yeah, all right. Who's going to win the other semi? I suppose, look, uh, it comes down. And funny, my wee boy was asking me last night, he's we 17, but he was saying, like, is, is Clifford, like, Messi and, and Conor Callan, like, Ronaldo? And, and how did, and it's maybe like that. You know, Clifford's got all the style, but Conor Callan's got the medals. He's got the numbers to back it up. So if Conor Callan plays, I think Dublin will beat Kerry. Um, if Con is injured, as is rumoured, I think that Kerry will probably just have, have too much. Um, but again, there'll be nothing between them teams either. And it's a case... Kerry have to deliver something like they've been close you know last year whenever Dublin went out and they had Tyrone to beat and, and couldn't get over the line and with a very similar team and, and I suppose the likes of your Shawnee Shays and, and David Clifford's and Tag Morley's they, they will be judged on how many times they win all earns and at the minute they've fallen a wee bit short you know Paddy Talley's came in and, and has brought a wee bit more defensive to them but they'll have big questions to ask as well what do they do with Tag Morley you know a lot of teams play with five forwards play with four forwards you know, Dublin are going to play with six forwards that all need watching. So, Kerry have probably a lot more to, to do than, than Dublin to win the game. And, but I think it's their time. I think Clifford's due something big. Even last time out, he was quiet, but he scored one of the goals of the championship. So, um, you can never rule Kerry out with their, their firepower. And I just think Kerry will have enough, especially if Conor Callaghan is injured. Um, and if James McCarthy's missing as well, which he thinks he will play, but... Um, that would be just enough for Kerry for me. Yeah, okay. And so it's a Derry Kerry final for you then, Conleth? Yeah, and Calvin to do the business in the, the early on tomorrow. Very good. Conleth, great to have you with us. Thanks a million. All right, thanks. Uh, all, Con- right, all the best. Thank you. Conleth Gilligan there. Getting football and off the ball is in partnership with AIB, proud sponsors of the GA Senior Football Championship. Check out the hashtag the toughest for more. Gaelic football on off the ball with AIB proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship check out hashtag the toughest for more